Over the past few months, I've gotten to use SSD on a number of professional and personal projects and I've come to really like and enjoy using it. And what's not to like? It's fully open source, insanely powerful yet easy to use and comes with a console that has a bunch of features. But you probably know all that. So what's left to supercharge? Well, while I do love the SSD console and the features it comes with, such as error reporting, email and Slack alerts, and of course auto deploy, I do think it leaves a few things to be desired, especially auto deploy. Since it runs on code build, there's not a very tight integration with GitHub, making it difficult if you're already hosting everything else there. You can't easily link to the deployments, you can't have preview comments on your pull requests, and if you wanted to customize certain things, you'd have to request customization of the build spec file. Now, I'm sure that the SSD team is well aware of these issues and are working on them, but in the meantime, I'm going to show you how you can use a GitHub app to work around this. This is a simple app built and deployed with SSD. Without going into too much detail, it's an XJS UI that allows signed in users to create and edit PDF templates using PDF Make, after which they can trigger the API to generate PDFs programmatically. And once generated, you can open the link to access the files. Here, I'm changing the disposition to view the file inline rather than downloading it directly. As you can imagine, the app has quite a few components. A Cognito user pool, a Redis cache, an RDS instance, a VPC, and then some. And of course, these are next year's web app component with a few configurations. Heading over to the app's GitHub repo, you'll see I have an open pull request whose preview has been deployed using SSD. And more than that, you'll notice a pretty nice comment with a link to the preview UI similar to what you'd see on a Vasel deployment. And just to verify that all this working as expected, if I open the file div, you'll see that it's a very simple change to one line. And if I go back to the comment and open the preview deployment, you'll see that the preview UI is exactly what you'd expect where the one word has changed from what we had earlier. The best part about this is how easily everything is integrated into GitHub. The environments are on GitHub, the links are on GitHub, and even the deployment logs are accessible from GitHub. So if you wanted to inspect your workflow, it's very easy to do so. Now, this is all achieved using a GitHub app. It's built using the ProBoot framework, and of course, deployed using SSD. So if you think about it, it's an SSD app to help you deploy SSD apps that's deployed using SSD. Pretty neat. This is how the flow works. Once you open or synchronize a pull request, the app gets triggered. It then loads your config file from GitHub, which we'll see in just a minute, and creates a new GitHub environment. After this, it will trigger your SSD deployment workflow, which runs the actual logic to deploy your app to AWS, and also creates a comment indicating that a deployment is in progress. Once done, the SSD outputs get stored in the environment to make them accessible in later steps, such as the final step, which reads the URL and app name from the outputs, then renders them on the GitHub comment. The ssdconfig.yaml file that we mentioned earlier contains a few values such as the name of your workspace on the console, your default branch, the name of the workflow to trigger, and the branch mappings to map branch names to static stage names, such as dev or prod. Then there's the ssd.yaml GitHub workflow that actually deploys the app. When using the console's auto-deploy, this process happens on code build, but you could just as easily set up a code build hosted runner on GitHub. The workflow job runs some standard steps and is used to deploy or remove a stage depending on the input passed. One important piece for all this to work is the values returned from your run function in your SSD config file. You can see here that I'm returning an object with an entry for URLs, which itself is an object with a key being the name of the app and the value the deployed URL. This exact structure is translated over to GitHub on the comment, with the name of the app and the URL getting rendered here respectively. You could just as easily have many entries or apps here, for example if you're on a monorepo. Now, if you wanted to, you could add this app directly to your repo and start using this, but I recommend it only for hobby projects. If you need to achieve the same workflow for private or sensitive projects, then I'd recommend cloning or forking the repo and deploying an app of your own. We use a variant of this app at work, customized to fit the needs there. By the time you're watching this, I'll have dedicated docs on how to do this in the readme of the repository, 
which you can find from the links in the description below. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.